Okay, um, evaluate the following without a calculator. So again, you will have to realize that without a calculator means this will not be in the calculator portion. So what is 16 to the 3 halves power? Here we go. You, I don't know what 16 to the 3 halves power is. I could take a guess, but uh, I'm going to rewrite it as a radical. So 16 goes here, my denominator is here, and my cube is here. And then I can use this exponent table that's in my toolkit and see that the square root of 16 is 4. And then I can also use my exponent table to see that 4 to the third power is 64. All right, next one, 125 to the 2 thirds power. So 125 goes in there. There's 3. There's 2. I will do the cube root first. The cube root of 125 is 5. And then I'll take 5 and square it and get 25. And then this one is negative 36 goes in here to the second power, the 1. The square root of negative 36 is a negative i, and to the first power, it would just stay that way. All right, a little bit of evaluating, kind of putting some things together. So I'm going to take 5 times, and in for x, I'll do negative 27 to the 2 thirds power. So uh, I don't know what negative 27 to the 2 thirds power is, so I'm going to put it in here. And I know that the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3, and the negative 3 squared is 9, which I can now bring with the 5, and I get 45. So my function, when x is negative 27, gives me an answer of 45. All right, next one I'm going to evaluate again, so I'm going to put 2 in my check mark. And I'm going to multiply, add them up. And this is a great answer, but with radicals, I hope you see that we can break this down into 3 and the square root of 2. So g of 2, there's our final answer. And one more, put 13 in. Okay, so going through this one, I'll have the cubed root of 8. The cubed root of 8 is 2. Add it with the other 2, and I get 4. So h of 13 is worth 4. Um, a little bit more, again, just presenting some of the other problems in, the same man in a different manner. Uh, I'm supposed to take my two functions and multiply them. So if I set this up. That means I can make houses. Uh, and I don't see any negative exponents, so I don't need a top floor or bottom floor. So 3 with negative 2, x to the 5 thirds, x to the 5 halves. So this house is very simple. You get negative 6, but I'm going to have to add these exponents. So here I go. I will need a common denominator. That will be a 6. So I'm going to multiply these by 2 and these by 3. So I'm going to get 10, 6 plus 15, 6, which gives me 25, 6. So that is my final exponent for x. Uh, in the next situation, I'm going to divide. So I'll put h of x in the numerator, um, k of x. No, I'm sorry. Did that wrong. Uh, what goes in the numerator? k of x goes in the numerator, h of x goes in the denominator. Here are my houses. So on the left side, I can just get negative 3, and now I will subtract the exponents. And the nice thing is these exponents are the same as what we just did. So 5 halves turned into 15 sixths in problem A, and 5 thirds turned into 10 sixths. Now when I subtract them, I'm going to get 5 6. 5 halves was 15 6, and that's more than 10 6. So when I'm done, the 5 6 exponent will stay in the top with the negative 3. All right, let's go to C. So f of x minus g of x. Um, I've got two options here. I'm going to take my 1 half, though, and turn it into a square root of x. Adding, subtracting, I'm going to stack like terms. And what I'll be seeing is how many square roots of x I have. It's negative 3 of them. Now, what's the domain of this new function that we're calling h of x? 
Well, I have a check mark, and what's in the check mark has to be greater than or equal to zero. X is all alone, so if I did a number line, here's zero, going this way, infinity. So this is my domain. And on the last one here, we have a composite function that says G is going to go into F. So I'll still have the 2, but in for x, I'll put x to the 7 halves. But then I'll still have the 1 third power. So parentheses, I'll distribute this to this. So 7 halves times 1 third. I don't see any simplifying, so I'm just going to multiply across 7 and 6. So 7, 6. So when I'm done, I get 2x to the 7, 6 power. All right, let's move to the bottom. Ooh, this is last section, right? Solving. Here we go. All right, we're going to solve the following equations. Be sure to check for extraneous solutions. All right, our goal is to solve for x. Um, for the most part, we will want to get x alone. Um, and you will see x is typically in some type of parentheses or check mark. So, all right, first one, to get x alone, when we are solving, we're going to work backwards in the order of operations. So I'm going to write this here. Oops, I already messed up. Mm -hmm. Okay, multiplying and dividing, exponents with check marks, then we can deal with what's left. All right, first thing I'm going to do on 13a is I'm going to move the 2. Do not distribute it. You want to get rid of the multiplication division. I will not get rid of the subtracting 1 yet because it's in parentheses. So I'm going to divide by 2. So just a little note, dividing by 2. That still leaves me with this. Then I see an exponent. I will have to get rid of the third power, and I will do that with a cubed root. So cube root this side, cube root this side. On the left side, I'll still have an x minus 1. On the right side, I'll have a 2. And now my last step is I can just add 1, so x is 3. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check for extraneous solutions, you shouldn't need to because it is a cubed problem. But if you just want to make that habit, if you put 2 in there, If I do the math on the left, would I get to the problem on the right? You could always just type this whole thing into your calculator, but otherwise, I do parentheses first for 2. 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 8 is 16. So this checks out. All right, next problem, get x alone, which is in the check mark. So when I'm working backwards in my order of operations, um, I cannot move the addition subtraction yet because it's in the check mark. There is no multiplying or dividing, so I will get rid of the check mark by using an exponent. So if they square root it, I will square both sides, which leaves me with an x plus 1 and then a 16. And now I just have to subtract the 1, so I get x is 15. So let's see if it's an extraneous solution before I circle it. So here's my check. If I do the math on the left side, do I get 4? And I do, so this works. No extraneous solution. Okay, the one for C. So you could keep this as a 1 half if you want. You could change it into a square root. It really doesn't matter whether you keep it like this or you do this. Let's say you keep it as a 1 half. To get rid of a fraction, we multiply it by the reciprocal. So I will use the exponent of 2 or 2 over 1. It's an exponent, not normal size, which means I will square this side. Okay? I can't do anything in the parentheses, so I can't get rid of the adding, subtracting, the multiplying, dividing, until that exponent is done. So on the left side, I now have 9x minus 20, and on the right side, I have x squared. Now what I notice is I have two types of x, and I will have to factor. So I'm going to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 9x over and add the 20 over. Now I can make my x. So I need factors of 20 that make negative 9. That's going to be a negative 5 and a negative 4. My factors will become x minus 5 and x minus 4. Set each of these equal to 0 and x equals 5 and x equals 4. 
All right, let's see if these both work. So I'm going to go to the original problem. Here I'm actually going to look at it in its square root version, though. So let's put 5 in first. And do I get 5? And then we'll look at if I put in 4, do I get 4? So in the check mark, I'm going to get 45. 45 take away 20 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. All right, here I'll get 36. 36 take away 20 is 16, and yes, the square root of 16 is 4. So both of these work, no extraneous solutions. Okay, D is probably our toughest problem here. Um, so I want to solve for x. The problem I'm running into is one of the x's in, in a square root. So let's get rid of that first. So that means I'm going to square both sides, square all of this side. So this side just becomes 2x plus 6. And the other side becomes x plus 3 times x plus 3. So you will want to have the neighbors. You will want to have um, those neighbors meet. I did not mean to cross that out. I meant to do a highlighter. So when the neighbors meet, I get x squared and 3x. I get another 3x and a positive 9. So when I'm done, I'll have this on the right side. So. 2x plus 6 equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. I notice I have two types of x's. So I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to factor. All right, let's bring, so the x squared will be fine, bringing the 2x to join the 4x, and bringing the 6 to join the 9. Now I'll make my x. So I need factors of 3 that make 4, and that's going to be 3 and 1. And I'll put 3 and 1 in here. And so when I solve, I'll get negative 3 and negative 1. Let's see if these really work. Um, I don't have a lot of room, so I'm going to erase my factor x here. All right, going back to the original problem, we're going to put negative 3 in. Does it work? So negative 3. 2 times negative 3 plus 6 equals negative 3 plus 3. Well, the right side is 0. Let's see what happens on the left side. So negative 6 plus 6. Uh, square root of 0 is 0, so that works. Uh, let's put in the negative 1 now. So same idea. 2 times negative 1 plus 6. Is that the same as negative 1 plus 3? So uh, on the left side, I'm going to get um, negative 2, and when I add that with 4, I get the square root of 4. When I take care of the right side, I get 2, and yes, the square root of 4 is 2. So this works, both answers, no extraneous solutions. All right, three more to go. So here on E, I have two square roots. So what I want to do is get one on one side, one on the other side. So I'm going to add this whole square root over. So now what happens is I have one square root on one side, one square root on the other side, and I won't get to any of the x's until I get rid of the square root. So I'm going to square both sides, which brings me to 2x minus 5, x plus 7. I have one type of x, so I can just solve for x. So I'm going to subtract my 1x. Then I'm going to add my 5. And then when I'm done, if you divide by 1, you'll get 12. So does 12 work? Let's see. Uh, all right. So 2 times 12 take away 5. 12 plus 7. Do we get 0? So here I get 24. 24 take away 5 is 19. Uh, inside this check mark, I get 19. And anything subtracting by itself is 0. So that one works. And our last problem. Going to work backwards. So first I'm going to add the 2 over. Then I'm going to divide by 4. And now I will cube both sides. So cube it, cube it. 
and now I'll just subtract 1 and x is 26. Let's see if 26 really works. So here we go, 4 cubed root 26 plus 1. Just so you know, we really don't have to check because cube roots are good, but um, 26 plus 1 is 27. Then I can take the cubed root of 27, which is 3, and then multiply, and yes, 12 take away 2 is 10. So we do have another answer. Last problem. All right, we're going to solve for m. It's one type of m. I just have to get m alone. So what I'm going to do is, since everything is under a square root, I am going to square both sides. So let's actually just read it, write this here. It's a little tight. Okay, because it's a square root, I'm going to square root this side, which just leaves me with this. I'm going to square this side, which negative 8 times negative 8 is a positive 64. Then, so what did we do? We squared first. Then I'll divide by 2, which leaves me with 32 over here. And now to get rid of this exponent, my suggestion is you use this exponent's reciprocal. Okay, so I'll take this to the negative one-fifth power, which will turn that just into m, and then I'll take negative 32 to the one-fifth power, which you can type into your calculator, that's fine. Otherwise, if you didn't have a calculator, the negative exponent just moves this whole thing down to the denominator. I don't know what to the one-fifth power is, so I could rewrite it as a check mark, and then I could always do the fifth root a 52. Either way, you're going to get a half, whether you have it as a fraction or as a decimal, that does not really matter. That's it. Those are all your videos.